All right, this practice is going to be for the hips and the spine. But rather than being down on the floor or being on hands and knees um, and being on a bed that's squishy, we're gonna do this using a chair in standing. So it's gonna give you a little taster of um, mimicking hands and knees types positions without having to be on your knees and having less weight in your hands. All right, so first off, we are going to face the seat of the chair. We're gonna inhale the arms up and we're gonna exhale to forward fold. Hands can come to the seat of the chair. You only need to go as far as halfway if you want to. You can bend your elbows and knees to come a little more face down. Come back up to halfway rise if you went lower and start to walk out the knees. And you can get really sassy with this and just keep it small at first, but as you make the movement a little bigger and maybe really sink that one hip back, you can start to get a little bit of, a little more stretch sensation in that outer hip, which might feel nice. A bit more movement through the hip joints and the pelvis little bit of side flexion, twisty stuff happening in the spine, and just minimal weight in the hands. Now, if you tend to be a really hypermobile person, just, <clears throat> just be aware of how much, when you send that one hip back, how much you dump into that one straighter knee. Okay. We can come back to tabletop. So I have got my feet stacked under my hips. I've got my back in a fairly neutral spine and my hands are stacked under my shoulders. So you can see how we're kind of mimicking a bit of a, a, bit of a tabletop position. So from here, we can have a little bit of a bend in the knees. We can push away rounding the back, letting the chin Duck in, head hangs, neck relaxes. And then we can inhale as we come through cow. So hips rise in the back, the back dips, chest and shoulders open forward. You're looking forward. Exhale to cat. Inhale to cow. And you can bend your knees however much you want to. So we'll just keep moving through that a few more times following your breath. And the next time that you find yourself in cat back, so arched, we're going to rock our body forward and back and you're gonna feel that sensation of um, tension or pulling or whatever in different parts of your spine, okay? We can come back into a flat tabletop back. And again, we can do that same body rocking idea, just keeping the spine fairly neutral. We start to mimic sort of um, downward dog-like shapes when we send the hips back. And when you come forward, you don't have to come too forward. It's gonna put more and more um, weight on your wrists in quite a lot of extension if you go really forward. So just, just listen to your body and what feels right for you. All right, 
let's step the feet wide, okay? So we're gonna come into a little bit of a straddle leg position. You can stay up high like this, or you can come down to your forearms too. And if your wrists are particularly sensitive, this will give them a bit of a break. And you might find that it's, um, you might think, why didn't we go on our forearms before? With our feet wider apart, it brings our height down and it makes this feel a little more reachable. So again, we can visit that rocking and you're gonna notice that with the legs wide, it kind of changes where that yummy stretch sensation kind of gets felt. It's also gonna have your hip joints, your, um, your thigh bones moving in the sockets a little differently because now they have to be away from the midline and then go into flexion and extension while they are away from the midline in a position that is called abduction. Okay, so we're just gonna rock back and forth a few times. If you want to, and if it feels good, you can kind of lean back into it and hang out for a bit. See if you can let your elbow straighten a bit and just really let your biceps kind of come towards your ears. You can also stay much higher up in this, this pose, that's fine, you can keep rocking. All right, rock forward. And now let's alternate bending a knee. So as we bend one knee, we're gonna get more lengthening down the inner thigh on one side, come back through center, do the other. And just switch back and forth at whatever speed feels best for you. But I always recommend that a lot of people just default to really fast and that can feel good and it's not wrong, but I always recommend, I, I highly encourage people to try slowing it down. And if they think that they're going ridiculously slow, try going even slower. It's just so interesting. The things that you notice when you have the time to notice them versus when you're mostly focused on just going back and forth. You're certainly welcome to hold the stretch to one side if that feels really good and welcome in your body. But I personally love just rocking in and out of things. It still gives me that um, yummy stretch sensation. It still obviously lengthens the tissues, but it's also mobilizing and lubricating the joints in my body over and over again by moving in and out of something rather than just moving into it once and being there for a while. Kind of just depends on your goal, depends on what feels best. Okay, one more time. And then we're gonna meet back at center. Okay, we can heel and toe the feet in, come back up to our hands. We're gonna step the feet back a bit, okay? And this is where we're gonna get a little more downward dog-esque, okay? So you can see I'm kind of in this funny tabletop position with my lovely shirt hanging down right now. Um, I'm in a funny tabletop where nothing is stacked. My, my feet are not stacked under my hips. My hands are not stacked under my, my shoulders. That's okay. We are going to do that body rocking back, but being further back, having that distance between the feet and the hands gives us the space to really come back into hip flexion and shoulder flexion so that if you have the room in your shoulder joints and if you have the um, extension in your spine and if you have the length in the back line of your legs, you can come into a much more downward dog-like position with your heels possibly on the floor but we don't have all that weight in our hands like we normally would. We don't have the same head rush that we normally would. And there's just something about the angle that just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, and again, you can, you can walk out your feet bending alternating knees like you would in a regular downward dog. You can be in a less extreme downward dog where your, sh your shoulders aren't perfectly straight and they're right by your ears.
Okay, we can bend our knees and walk ourselves back up the mat, folding in. Staying in halfway rise if being head down is a lot for you is always an option. Nice, generous bend in the knees, coming back up to stand. All right, so that was our standing kneeling practice. Just some gentle movements, basic stretches that most people are familiar with, but turn them into a little bit of a flow, moving in and out of things so that it feels a little more, I don't know, mobilizing and not just a static stretch for a long time. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was useful. If you would like more things like that, please let me know. I'm always curious to know what is going to kind of tick boxes for people the best and make practicing movement just feel that much more welcoming to them. All right, I'll see you next time.